69 degrees on this cloudy day. It's time to do a little bit of a tomato plant update. When it comes to my plants that I grew in the basement, some of them are going to make it and some of them are not. We'll take a look. I've mulched everything. But today, I thought I'd add just a little bit of insurance to my tomato crops. In case mine don't do well, I went to one of the, well it was Lowe's is where I went. And I picked up three tomato plants as sort of an insurance policy. And these are a different kind. I had big boys and better boys on those. I bought, what is it? Rutgers Well, that's a big boy. I told you a story. I got another one of them This is a big beef And they're healthy little plants So we're gonna put them In another spot Around there by the deck. It's not very good soil, but we'll add some soil amendments and hopefully they'll do all right around there. Now these two tomato plants here look pretty well like they're gonna fail. The bottom limbs died, but the top ones have still got some green to them and the stems are standing up like they're still alive. I thought about planting one of my new ones out here, but since this is where the birds come all the time anyway, I really didn't expect a whole lot of success with these two tomato plants around here so we're going to leave those alone and give them a chance to make it if not we're all we lost was a little time digging and planting and mulching okay this area right here would be a good a good place to amend some soil and plant a couple tomato plants got some trees coming up here i need to get down it's acting a whole lot like it might rain this afternoon i haven't got my shovel with me oh i know where it is in the back of the truck Let's turn a little dirt and see what it'll do. Well, first of all, before I do any digging here, which is going to consume a whole lot of time that I don't want to run the video camera, and I think I feel raindrops on my head, we better stop and check our other tomato plants out and at least get that much of the video made. All right, I got two tomato plants here. I need to get some metal rods and secure my cage a little better when that plant gets bigger. That plant's definitely going to make it. It's looking good. So is this one over here. Well, we got high hopes for those. I've, like I say, I mulched the dirt, put some cedar mulch around them, and put some more potting soil. Let's go look at these over here. Two round front ain't diddly. Three insurance ones we're gonna put in over there. Let's see what these over here did. These two here are looking good. They need tied up. But I mean, my back is hurting today. I don't think I'll get anything tied up right now. The wind's picking up. This spindly thing here ain't gonna make it. I think give that one, it's got some damage on the leaves from the sun. I give it a fighting chance. We'll see what these did. I think my insurance tomato plants are gonna do better than these. I'm gonna tell you a story while I'm resting. My, sore, my lower back is hurting from, I think it's the way I walk from limping to keep my leg from hurting. I strain my back even more. So I'm sitting down here to rest a minute before I go back around front. But I thought of a story I could tell you. I've been a long time since I shared one of my Navy stories. A lot of you are aware of the stink that's been going on with Bud Light here on the news lately. And I won't get into that, but if you're interested in what's going on with Bud Light and why people are boycotting it, I advise you to do a little researching on YouTube or Google or somewhere. But it reminded me of a story. Uh, I tell you what, look up Huckabee, Mike Huckabee's video channel. He did a pretty good job of explaining the other day 
about the Bud Light story, the day before yesterday, I think it was. Watch that and see what you think about the way they're doing uh, Bud Light. Anyway, we, we occasionally drink a can of beer around here. We might make a 12-pack last two months. Occasionally, we'll drink a can of beer, and it's been Bud Light, but I'll tell you right now, I'm going to boycott the product. But in the Navy, we drink more than our share of beer. But it's, it's like in all branches of the service, I guess. When you get off in the evening, you want to go out and have a drink or splurge a little bit. So we drank a lot of beer when I was in the Navy. When I was, I guess I was 18 or 19. I hadn't been in the Navy long. I went into a bar. I hadn't planned on telling this one. And this was in Norfolk or Little Creek, Virginia. Up there, you had to be 21 to drink full regular beer, but they sold what they call 3.2 beer, which is 3.2% alcohol. Well, I went in this bar and sit there and drink like three or four hours. This 3.2 ain't dilly. I'm wasting my money drinking this 3.2 beer. I forget who I was with, one of the fellows. And it wasn't long. I drank so much 3.2, I fell off the bar stool. I literally fell off the bar stool and landed on the floor. We had to get a taxi cab and go back to the ship because I was too drunk to go anywhere else. So 3.2 beer would definitely get you a buzz. I was vain enough to think I ought to be able to drink the full strength beer. Ain't much difference in it. It's all a game they play. But on the ship, when we were out at sea, the captain kept, oh, I don't know, eight or ten cases of beer stashed away in his somewhere up in officers quarters where nobody could get to it and when we were in port like in guantanamo bay we went over to a, a park we rode a navy bus and this guantanamo bay is a big area it'll cover more than this whole spalding county georgia it's a pretty big area well we went down to the cove at this little park on several occasions and had a beer party. I was into scuba diving then and we did a lot of scuba diving, some of us. I've still got my tanks around here somewhere but I'll never dive again. But uh, <clears throat> we'd go out there and drink and get, get a buzz on, go back to the ship and have a nice little beer party. We cooked hamburgers and hot dogs and had a pretty good time. It's not like you could go anywhere. There's nothing there but Guantanamo Bay. You can swim in the ocean and maybe play some baseball or something. But we loaded ourselves back on that U.S. Navy bus. A big old, like a school bus, but it was gray. Went back to the ship and... Um, Loaded all this beer back on the ship. And I don't know, there was seven or eight cases, big cases of beer left over. Got underway. We're out in the ocean a couple of days later. The captain sounds uh, quarters, which is like a roll call. This buzzer goes off. And why are we having quarters in the middle of the afternoon? when quarters is normally held early in the morning. Well, we all come out to our quarter station and there stands the captain in the XO. And, uh, <clears throat> he's got all of our cases of beer stacked up right by the hand railing. On the, well, it's a bulwark, B-U-L-W-A-R-K, which is a little wooden wall about yay tall. And he says, I want to know who came in officer's quarters and busted into this beer and drank some beer. We don't drink when we're on duty around here. Would the guilty party please step forward? 
Nobody stepped forward. I know one of you done it now. Be honest, be a man about it, and step forward and tell me who you are. Nobody stepped forward. Said something to the gunner's mate, and it wasn't long the gunner's mate came back carrying an M1 rifle. Handed to the captain. The captain was a crack shot with an M1 rifle. He could shoot out there in the ocean at flying fish when they come out of the water and fly across. And a lot of times he would hit them. He was a pretty good shot. Parks, you and Jones, or whoever the other guy was, step forward. We step forward as a hope. He ain't gonna say I had anything to do with that damn beer. I want you to take these 10 cases of beer and throw them right out there in the ocean. So we chucked them over the side of the ship. You'd think they would sink. Well, I got news for you. Cases of beer will float. And they, the ship is kind of moving along one or two miles an hour. The beer is just drifting farther and farther away. It's probably about as far as from here to that old Oldsmobile out there in the backyard. Captain takes the M1. Last chance. Anybody going to tell me who you are? Nope. He said, well, there will be no more beer parties. Y'all have spoiled it for everybody. Took the M1 and started shooting at them cases of beer. And he's fired round after round, hitting them cans of beer until eventually all you could see was a few cans floating around and everything else was gone. They drifted down to the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean somewhere. I really didn't think anybody was going to step forward, but when he asked me to step forward, I thought he was going to ask, accuse me, but it wasn't me. I think I know who it was. We had an alcoholic. He was a third-class electrician, and I'm pretty sure it was him. He got in trouble for almost everything you can think of. I'm not going to mention his name. He's no longer with us. Somebody told me here a few years ago that he had passed on. Anyway, that's my little Navy story. Don't drink beer when you're not supposed to. Your comments are welcome. I uh, appreciate you listening to my story, even though it didn't make a whole lot of sense. How many of you have done your share of drinking when you were young? I don't drink daily now. Like I said, occasionally I'll drink a, a can of beer with a piece of pizza or something. Uh, my wife will drink a can once or twice a month. Or when we have company come to the house, we'll offer them a can of beer. I don't drink that much at all. I, basically, I could say I don't drink at all, other than once in a while I'll drink a beer. My gardenia bush is all covered with vines out here again. And the clouds and rain are moving in on me. Let's go over there and do a little digging. I just wanted to share my little tomato plant update. We'll call it a tomato plant and a story. Mm -hmm.